Joel and Obadiah. These two books are among the most difficult to place in time. Most of the prophet, most of the prophetic books indicate the name of the kings who ruled during the prophet's time, but Joel only mentions the elders and Obadiah. <coughs> gives no indication in Joel the temple was in operation and Israel was already scattered Joel 3 verse cha Joel chapter 3 verse 1 verse 2 if there was a temple and no king a date of about 500 BC might be in view Obadiah's harsh message of destruction against Edom would also fit well there, but could just as easily fit in several other periods. The dates of these books must remain an open question. The occasion for Joel's prophecy was a locust plaque. These were common enough in the ancient world and the vastity into the economy, which was largely archery cup. Cultural. In most of the profligate books before the exile, the prophets proclaim a coming judgment. Joel, like prophets, Joel, like the prophets after the exile, interpreted the current crisis as a judgment of God. As this book proceeds, the prophet made it clear that the plaque was going to get worse before it got better, and he called the people to repentance, and they responded in unusual situation for the prophet the last year the last part of the book provides one of the most familiar discussions of the day of the lord because peter quotes sections in his sermon at pentecost the connection between the day of the lord and joel and pentecost is the widespread outpouring of the spirit and the opportunity for any call any to call on the name of the lord and be saved. Joel is one of the most positive prophetic books as it exemplifies the process of God's people responding to God's prophet with repentance, followed by declarations of coming restoration for the people and judgment of their enemies. Obadiah is an example of the last part judgment of Israel's enemies. The shortest book in the Old Testament is an oracle of judgment against the Enemites for their treachery against Israel. Joel chapter Joel chapter 1 verse 15 For the day of the Lord is near and it will come like destruction from the Almighty. Joel chapter 2 verse 15 Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and bounding in love, and he relents from sin and captivity. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, verse 42. I will pour out my spirit on all people, and everyone who calls on my name of the Lord will be saved. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. The Lord will roar from the land, and the earth and the heavens will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people. And then Obadiah 15, the day of the Lord is near as you have done. It will be done to you. The teachings, God wants us to respond to him wholeheartedly. God is a jealous for his people, meaning that he is and the judges be seeking for loyalty in a committed relationship. Natural disasters like the locust plaque and Joel can serve as a judgment of God, but not all who suffer the consequences should therefore be judged guilty. Such disasters draw our attention to God and stimulate us to self examination. The day of the judgment is to be feared and therefore it should motivate us to change our ways prophecy is more important for what it reveals about god than what 
it reveals about the future. For me, fulfillment is sure, but the message is primary. God holds the nations responsible for how they treat his people. God forgives the sin of his people. No one is attempt from God's justice. Prophecy, God's purgation of his plan, whether it refers to the past, present, or future. The day of the Lord, a time when the current state of affairs will be replaced with the Lord attendant order. A time of justice and a covenant fulfillment. This will result both in judgment on those opposing God and in blessing for God's people. Though many nations experience a day of the Lord. For example, Babylon, when it was judged, there will be a final day of the Lord when a permanent world order of God's choosing will be established. Joel chapter 1 the word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Papirio, in a vision of locusts. Hear this, you elders, listen, all who live in the land. Have any like this ever happened in your days, or in the days of your ancestors? Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. What the locust one was left. The greatest locusts have eaten what the great locusts have left. The young locusts have eaten what the young, young locusts have left. Other locusts have eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Well, all you drinkers of wine, and well because of the new wine. For it has been snatched from your lips. A nation has evaded my land. A mighty army without a number. It has the teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my big trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white, more like virgins and sackcloth, grieving for the be broad of her young. Grain offerings and drink offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests are in mourning, those who minister before the Lord. The fields are ruined, the ground is dried up, the grain is destroyed, and the new wine is dried up, and the olive, the olive oil fails. The sparrow farmers, well, you vine growers, grieve for what for the wheat and barley because the harvest of the field just is destroyed the vine is dried up and the fig tree is withered and the pomegranate the palm and the apple tree all the trees of the field are dried up surely the people's joy is withered away a call to lamentation Put on sackcloth, you priests, and mourn well. You who ministered before the altar, come spend the night in the sackcloth. You who ministered before my God, for the grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your God. Declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. At last for the, that day, for the day of the Lord is near, and it will come like destruction from the Almighty. Has not the food been cut off before your eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of God. Let all who live in the land tremor for the day of the Lord is coming. It is that close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes. 
such as never has in ancient times, nor ever will be in, in ages to come. Before them, fire devours them, a flame blazes. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them, a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses, and they go up along the cavalry with a noise like the of chariots, and they leap over the mountaintops like a crackling fire consumed and stumble, like a mighty army drawn up for battle. At the sight of the nations are in anguish, every face turns pale, and they charge like warriors. They scowl walls like soldiers, and they all march in line, not swerving from their course. They do not jostle each other, each marches straight ahead. They plunge through defenses without breaking ranks, and they rush upon the city, and they run along the wall. <coughs> They climb into the houses like thieves and they enter through the widows. Before them, the earth shakes and the heaven trembles and the sun and moon are darkened and the stars no longer shine and the Lord thunders at the head of the army. Blow your trumpet in the Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. in your heart this is still in chapter Joel 2 even now declares the Lord return to me with all your heart or fasting and weeping and mourning rend your heart and not your garments return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and pounding in love and he relents from sin and captivity who knows, he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings, and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet of Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, and concentrate the, concentrate the assembly and bring together the elders, gather the children and those nursing at the breasts. And let the bridge groom, the bridegroom, leave his room in the bride, bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the port of the gold and the altar. And let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn. A byword among the nations. Why should they say, among the peoples, where is their God? The Lord's answer. Then the Lord was jealous for his land and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully, and never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. I will drive the northern glory for far from you, pushing it into a parched and bearing land. Its eastern ranks were drawn in the Dead Sea, and its western ranks of the Mediterranean Sea, and its stench will go up. Its smell will rise. Surely he was done. Surely he has done great things. Do not be afraid, man of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid. You wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you to all the rings, because he is faithful. 
He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rain, as before the freshen floors will be filled with green. The vats were overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of your Lord, your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. The day of the Lord, and afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your old men will have dreams, and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in heaven and on the earth. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be safe. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance as the Lord has said. Even among the survivors, whom the Lord calls, I report out my spirit on all people. Peter quotes this passage on the day of Pentecost in Acts two, Acts chapter two, verse seventeen twenty one, to explain that the miracle for speaking in tongues. There are three main viewpoints regarding how Peter uses Joel's prophecy. Some interpreters see complete fulfillment of Joel's prophecy in the spirits of the first believers on the day of Pentecost. Second, some interpreters believe that Peter was simply using Joel's prophecy as an illustration of what would happen in effect. Peter was saying that that is the same Holy Spirit that has spoken of Joel about about Joel. Free some others suggest that Joel's prophecy was particularly fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given, but the signs mentioned in the verse 30, 32 will be fulfilled later in connection with the return of Christ in great glory. Joel chapter 3 In those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jezebel. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my adherents, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations, and divided up my land, and they cast lots for my people, and traded boys for prostitutes, and they sold girls for wine to drink. Not what you have against me, Tyre and Sidon, in all you regions of Philistine. Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. For you took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks that you might send them far from their homeland. See, I'm going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them, and I will return on your own heads what you have done. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and I will sell them to the Sabines, a nation far away. The Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war, rouse the leaders, the rouse the warriors, and let all the fighting men draw near and attack. 
Beecher Plowshare. Beecher Plow Plowshares. Don't know how to pronounce. Into the sword. In your pruning hooks into spears. And let the weakened say, I am strong. Come quickly, all you nations from every side and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, Lord, and let the nations be aroused, and let them advance into the valley of Jezreel, for there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come tramp for the grapes, for the wide press is full in the vast overflow, so greatly is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will war from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble. But the Lord will be a reference for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. <laughs> Blessings for God's people. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in the Zion. My holy hill, Jerusalem, will be holy, never again will foreigners evade her. And that day mountains were drip new wine, and the hills were flow with milk. All the ravens of Judah were run with water, a fountain will flow out of the Lord's house, and were waters the valley of Axias, but Egypt will be desolate. Edom a desert waste because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Judah will be inhabited forever and Jerusalem through all generations. Shall I leave their innocent blood and marriage? No, I will not. The Lord dwells in Zion. Everyone answers to God. Joel chapter 3 verse 7 verse 17 they cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes and their soldiers for wine to drink see I am going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them and I will return on your own heads what you have done so everyone answers to God the prophet Joel spoke a blistering warning the Lord warning from the Lord First, he described a recent attack of rabious locusts, oversized grasshoppers that had devoured the nation's crops and left everyone hungry. Then, Joel predicted a future event, one God will judge evildoers. This terrifying day of the Lord would bring disaster like no one has ever seen, and his envisions lush landscapes being scorched into wastelands. The prophet asks, The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Joel chapter 2 verse 11. And in the final chapter of the book of Joel says, Exactly when the Lord stands ready to judge. And it's everyone on earth. God says he will gather the world in the valley of Jezebel. And name meaning the Lord judges. Joel chapter 3 verse 2. God will punish the world's great wickedness, and no one will escape entering to the Lord.
I'm not reading Emma's tomorrow. I read Emma's tomorrow. Obadiah. Next book. The book of Joel describes the cabin civilly that befell ancient Judah when it was struck by a locust plaque. The locusts, in fact, can do an astonishing amount of damage to other culture. Over the past few hundred years, a number of observers have left accounts of the sudden and complete devastation of crops produced by a swarm of locusts in Africa, the Near East, and the American Midwest. The situation in the ancient world has exacerbated by the fact that almost all farming was substance farming. Catastrophic crop failure with a single year meant starvation or near starvation as a portion of food and suffering quantities to make a difference was not feasible. Joel chapter 1 verse 4 uses four different Hebrew words to describe the locust translator struggled to disnare and disquinish among them. For example, the New American Standard Bible says, What the gnawing locust has left, the swarming locust has eaten, and what the swarming locust has left, the creeping locust has eaten. And what the creeping locust left, the stripping locust has eaten, and phrases added. The NIV puts it this way, what the local swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten, what the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten, what the young locusts have left, other locusts have eaten, a phrase is added. One translation is not necessarily better than the other, another, both are trying to bring out the fact that four different Hebrew words for locusts. The original meanings of which have been lost appear in the original. What do these words, what do these four words represent? Or four different species of locusts apply? This is possible, but it may be that the reference is to the four different instars, stages of instant growth of a single species under the scenario. It would appear that the first term Naps gnawing locust in naive locust swarm is the third stage of growth. The second term in naps swarming locust. The NIV great locust is the fourth and final instar in a dark locust. The third term naps creeping locust in NIV young locust is the larva stage representing the offspring of the previous generation of locusts as the first instar of the instant. The fourth term nav stripping locusts. NIV other locusts is the nuff, the second star of the locusts, to suggest that a swarm of locusts move into vast the land and lay their eggs. The eggs and hatch and the rarest larvae and nafs devour every green thing that remain. The reputation seen in one verse four clearly makes the point. That nothing was left by the time the last stage of locusts had eaten its fill. Bring your heart. Rend your heart in Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Rend your heart in natural garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sin and captivity, and he relents. He who knows he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Rend your heart. God is not satisfied with outward acts of repentance 
Tearing one's garments was a customary way of expressing grief or remorse. However, like all outward acts, the tearing of a garment could be done without true sorrow or repentance. The God that re God required more than more eternal words or actions. He wanted to, a change of heart and sorrow over sin. Joel chapter 2 verse 11 The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number, and mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great, it is dreadful. Who can endure it? Who can endure it? Nothing will be able to withstand the wrath of God. Joel 2 verse 4 Joel chapter 2 verse 4 They have the appearance of horses They glop along the cavalry The appearance of horses Joel compared the speed and strength Of the invaders to Guapin horses Joel chapter 2 verse 14 Who knows? He may turn the relent and leave behind a blessing, green offering, and drink offerings for the Lord God. Who knows? These words suggest that even at the last moment the Lord would withhold his wrath and display his grace if the people would truly repent. As a result, our culture would be restored and productive fever would return. There would be food and drink for the people, for the offerings to the Lord. Joel chapter 2 verse 16. Gather the people. Concentrate the assembly. Bring together the elders and gather the children and those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. The bridegroom bride, according to the Jewish tradition codified in the Misnana, a couple could be excused from reciting daily prayers on their wedding day. But Joel excused no one from prayer at this time of spiritual emergency. Joel chapter 2, verse 18, verse 19. The Lord was a jealous for his hand and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you great new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. The jealous for his land, the deep love. Of God for the land of Israel is coupled with his abiding love for the people. On every occasion on which God brought judgment on the land, there was the hope that one day his zeal for the land would lead to a renewal of blessing. In response to repentance, God would bring restoration and blessing.